Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Cryptographic Methods, Part 1. Today we're going to begin by discussing cipher suites, and then we're going to conclude with a brief discussion on some cryptographic implementations. There's a fair amount of information, so let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by discussing cipher suites. In most cases, a single cryptographic method will not provide the required level of security that most organizations seek. The solution is to use a cipher suite to provide the necessary security. A cipher suite is when a group of cryptographic solutions are combined to provide user authentication, encryption, and message authentication solutions into a single set. One measure of the strength of the cipher suite is the number of bits that make up the keys. The longer or more bits the key set, the stronger the cipher, which will lead to a stronger cipher suite. One thing to remember, the stronger the cipher suite, the more computing power and time it will take when that cipher suite is in use. So it becomes a balance between the strength of the cipher and the computing resources that are on hand. Let's conclude with a brief discussion on some cryptographic implementations. First up is PAP, Password Authentication Protocol, which is actually not a cryptographic implementation. It's an authentication protocol that does not use any cryptographic method to ensure the integrity of the message. The username and password are sent in clear text, and this is not a secure solution. Password authentication protocol should only be used when all other cryptographic methods are not possible. Then there is CHAP, Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. It's a cryptographic authentication protocol used to authenticate remote clients based on hashed values. The client device, the one requesting authentication, combines its password with a key supplied by the server to generate a hashed value. MD5 is the algorithm used to generate that message digest. The client sends the hashed value, or message digest, back to the server, which then compares what was received against a stored value, so a stored version of that hashed value. If the values match, the client is authenticated and then given access to authorized resources. CHAP is considered to be a type of HMAC, that's hash-based message authentication code. RIP-EMD, or Race Integrity Primitives Evaluation Message Digest, is another cryptographic implementation. It is a cryptographic hashing algorithm developed as an open source solution. When implemented, the most common version is RIP-EMD 160. It uses a 160-bit hashing function. Then there is NTLM version 2, or NetLand Manager version 2. It's a cryptographic hashing process used in Microsoft Windows operating systems for the storing of passwords in the registry as hashed values. So the actual password is not stored in the registry, only the hashed value. NTLM version 2 uses HMAC MD5. That's HMAC using Message Digest 5 as the method of creating and storing the Message Digest. It replaced the original version, which was NTLM, which used MD4 as the hashing algorithm for the HMAC. So let's discuss the Message Digest algorithm, or the MD algorithm. It's a cryptographic hashing algorithm developed by Ron Rivest as a method of using hashed values for authentication purposes, particularly to ensure that the data that is received is the data that was sent. MD5 is the most popular version and always generates a 128-bit hashed value. While still in use, MD5 has been proven to be a broken cryptographic solution and should not be used for mission-critical security needs. A better solution is SHA, or Secure Hash Algorithm. It's a cryptographic hashing algorithm developed by the NSA, or National Security Agency, as a method of using hashed values for authenticating data, that is, to ensure the data's integrity. 
SHA-1 is the most popular version and always generates a 160-bit hashed value. In theory, SHA-1 has been broken. I say in theory because the weakness has yet to be proven, but most U.S. government agencies now require the use of SHA-2 in place of SHA-1. SHA-2 is an improved version of the original SHA family of hashing algorithms. That concludes this session on cryptographic methods part one. We began by discussing cipher suites and concluded with a brief discussion on cryptographic implementations. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I hope you watch another one soon.